In the last lesson, we looked at how combinatorial explosions made it impractical for software testers to test every single possible permutation within a system under test. In this example, in this lesson, we'll talk about how many pairwise tests are required in different situations. In particular, we'll talk about that same system under test, building up that combinatorial explosion from one parameter in the model all the way to nine parameters in that same model. And we'll look at each stage, as each parameter is added, how many two-way tests are required from hexwise even in the face of this ever-exploding number of total possible permutations. We'll take a note of the dramatic difference or divergence that we'll see over time. As a spoiler, we'll see the same number of total possible tests that are required in the two-way solution when we have two parameters in the plan. And as we add ever more parameters into the model, the number of two-way tests will strike you as increasingly impressive, increasingly implausible. How in the world is it possible, you'll ask yourself, that every possible pair of tests can possibly be included in these tiny numbers of two-way test set solutions that you'll see. As a way of kind of managing expectations, bear in mind that this presentation will not dive deep into why that's happening or how that's happening. We'll just note that it is happening and it's important to understand that dynamic. A later lesson will dive into how it's possible to achieve so many pairs and so few tests. So now let's dive into hexwise and take a look at the same system under test, first with one single parameter, increasingly stepping up this system under test to include all nine of those parameters. When we just have one parameter, we've got three possible tests. It's not even worth clicking on the create test button. When we have two parameters, and each of those parameters has three values, we'll see that nine possible tests exist and will require all nine tests to achieve complete two-way coverage. Not terribly exciting. When we add a third parameter, we've got 27 total possible scenarios. And here, the divergence starts to happen. We require 10 scenarios out of those 27 to achieve 100% coverage of all possible pairs, but we can do that in roughly a third of the tests. Where it starts to get more interesting, we're now up to four parameters, and we see the total possible number of permutations is now 81 tests. We can achieve complete two-way coverage in only 10 tests still. We didn't increase the number of tests at all. As we increase the number of parameters to five parameters here, 243 tests. We're up to 14 two-way tests. So we've got a very interesting, fairly exciting dynamic going on here. The number of total possible permutations is starting to explode, but the number of two-way tests required, the number of tests required to achieve coverage of every possible pair in the system is only going up a tiny bit. This is fantastic if it keeps going. Let's look at what happens if we start to step up to the system under test with nine parameters in it. When we have six parameters in the model, 729 tests, again, only 14 two-way tests. If we add another parameter, we've now got eight Sorry, seven parameters in the plan, 2,000 possible permutations, only 17 pairwise tests. We'll add our eighth parameter into the plan, 6,500 possible tests to choose from. We only need 17 to achieve 100% coverage of all of the possible pairs. This is an exciting divergence. You cannot 
design pairwise tests well unless you understand the dynamics at play here. Total possible number of tests are going through the roof. The total number of two-way tests required to achieve coverage of all the possible pairs is only going up a tiny bit, if at all, at each step in the process. So now we get to all of the parameters in our original plan being included, almost 20,000 possible tests, and here again, just 17 tests out of those almost 20,000. And those 17 tests cover every single possible pair within the system under test. That's an exciting dynamic to, uh, to keep in mind as we go ahead with our Hexawise training. A relatively small number of tests can achieve coverage of 100% of the pairs, even in the face of ever-increasing numbers of total possible permutations in these systems under tests. The combinatorial explosions apply to total possible numbers of tests, but pairwise testing has a solution to that, and the pairwise testing solution is not governed by those same exponential growth patterns that you see when you look at the total possible number of permutations in a system under test. Thank you.